What do oxalates do to us? Why should we avoid them? Well, they grab minerals right away. Okay. And they, um, when they do that, they form <clears throat> crystals. So it takes eight to 12 pairs of these ions of say calcium oxalate. So you're gonna absorb maybe the salts of sorrel version, the potassium oxalate into your body uh, from your, I mean, we're just, we'll go back to the gut and the health stuff because there's a whole lot of gut damage that can okay. happen. But if anywhere, either in your gut or in your bloodstream, if it moves into your bloodstream, it's gonna eventually end up as calcium oxalate, but sometimes it's magnesium oxalate, iron oxalate. It can, the oxalates are whole family. So it starts off as a single molecule, that forms these pairs that pair up into a nanocrystal. And that nanocrystal is very toxic. It's equated with asbestos crystals and silica crystals in the literature. Okay. So you basically have these little tiny invisible uber small nanocrystals that are equivalent to asbestos running around your body. It's absorbed from your gut, goes straight to the liver, travels straight from the liver to the heart, then the lungs, then the heart, then the general circulation, and then most of it will get filtered out into the kidneys. But in the meantime, it's been traveling around being a toxic crystal that can get hooked up on cells and start accumulating in the body. It tends to get stuck on cells that are reproducing, those cells are regenerating. Those cells have a lot more carbohydrate matrix on them, which is very sticky to the crystals, and then prevent that rejuvenating or repairing or growing tissue from properly repairing and you end up with some fibrotic scarring or bad repair or old injuries that don't completely go away and things like that because they they get hung up on these tissues that are trying to heal and don't they um cause inflammation the as the crystals run around in the cells they, they're really perturbing the cells the cells get leaky they might leak potassium and, brings in the innate immune system, it, it inspires inflammatory responses around the body and can get you to the point where you feel like you've got six autoimmune conditions because your, your inflammation processes are flying perpetually because you might be eating a high oxalate food like spinach or tahini or almond bread or cocoa-based fat bombs or whatever, peanuts and potatoes potato chips, uh, they're so easy to like get into multiple foods that happen to be high in oxalate and you're eating them continually. So you have this continual influx of something that forms a toxic crystal that can float around the body and the tissues and causes um, amazing amounts of potential mayhem depending on the dose and constancy of your exposure. Hmm. And the really worst problem is that over time, you get more and more deficits in your metabolic health, changes in your metabolism, changes in how well your glands are working. It, it's probably affecting the development of diabetes because it's stressing out the pancreas and the adrenal glands, the testes, the ovaries, the thyroid gland. Research shows that by the time we're 50, 85% of us have oxalates stuck in our thyroid gland. 85%. Mm. Well, I know thyroid issues are a huge, you know, epidemic right now. Every, I mean, everyone I know <laughs> that's over a certain age is taking a thyroid pill or, you know, has some kind of thyroid issue. And uh, it's, it's very, very widespread. That's, it's interesting that you may have your finger on what's, on what's actually causing this. Uh, 